The low poly art style has become extremely popular in indie game development, to the point that every game looks the same, especially those using popular asset packs like the Sinti assets. But I'm here to tell you that your game doesn't have to look like all the other games, and that's because there's a really simple way to change your game's look, and that's by using post-processing shaders. I already made a video about this where we turned a simple scene made out of the most basic shapes into a vibrant, pleasant looking game scene. But today we'll take a Sinti asset pack and turn it into something fresh without actually changing the models themselves. So let's start with the most famous, but also the simplest shader of them all. The pixelation shader. This shader reduces the visual fidelity of your textures by transforming them into a grid of distinct square pixels, mimicking the graphic style of older video games. This effect can evoke a sense of nostalgia and simplicity, making it a perfect base for achieving a retro aesthetic in your game. When you combine the pixelation shader with the grain effect, the scene takes on an old film-like quality. The grain effect adds a layer of noise that simulates the look of an old film. This creates a visibly rough and gritty appearance to your game, further enhancing that retro vibe. To go even further, we can add some chromatic aberration to introduce a modern twist to your retro look. Chromatic aberration, also known as color fringing, simulates the way lenses fail to focus all colors to the same convergent points, resulting in a slight misalignment of colors. In simpler term, it adds a red and blue blurred outline to your scene. This can give the visuals a slightly disorienting and surreal look. By combining all these effects, you can craft a uniquely creepy shader that just stands out. The shader setup not only dials up the atmospheric tension, making every scene more engaging and eerie, but also sets a distinct visual tone that can be perfect for, for example, horror games, where the environment plays a crucial role in the overall player experience. Let's move on to another essential shader that I believe any indie dev should have in their library. An outline shader. Outline shaders can instantly alter the look of a game, giving it a distinct stylized appearance that can help differentiate it from others. By emphasizing the edges of the models, it creates a visual pop that is eye-catching and can be adjusted to suit various artistic visions. From thick, bold lines to subtle hints that simply enhance the depth and structure. But an outline shader doesn't have to radically change the entire look of your game. It can also be used, for example, to highlight certain objects to help guide the player. Overall, the outline shader is an incredible tool that you should all have in your toolkit. What makes the outline shader look even cooler is when you combine it with other shaders like, for example, a toon shader. A tune shader, also called cell shading, is a shader that softens your edges and shadows while also adding brightness to your textures and materials, giving your world a flat and cartoony look. Now, this is really cool on its own, but if on top of that you add our previous outline shader to this, you get a very distinct look that in my opinion looks quite amazing, especially with low poly packs like our beloved Sinti Asset packs. By the way, this is also the shader combination that I use in my own game, Catnip Dreams. You can wishlist my game with the link in the description. The outline shader and tune shader together can create loads of different looks and styles. For example, if you soften the outlines to where they are basically just stay dark a version of the asset colors, you get a more Breath of the Wild kind of look, while if you crank everything up to the max, you get a more Simpsons kind of vibe. You can also combine these shaders with our pixel shader to get yet another very distinct and unique look. Here you can see our pixel shader. Let's now add the tune shader. And finally, let's add the outline shader to the mix as well. As you can see, just by having and playing around with these three shaders, you can already look different than 90% of other games. Now this next shader will give your game a very artsy look, making your scenes look like oil painting. What you're looking at is called a Kuwahara filter. This filter kinda smudges all your edges and colors, giving it this very distinct painting look. And this already looks quite amazing, but let's again combine it with a few of our previous shaders. Let's start by adding a tune shader to it. Now we have a more bright and vibrant oil painting look. And if you add the outline shader to the mix as well, you somehow still keep the smudged look, but also get some clarity and depth back. I think this is probably one of the most unique looks that we'll achieve today, because I haven't found a single game that uses this exact style. However, if you know a game that uses this exact style, then please let me know in the comments. I would love to check it out. 
Okay, so these next three shaders are less flexible, meaning you can't really combine them that well with the other shaders on this list, but they look unique on their own that I still value them just as much. Let's start with the Ditter shader. I think the best example for this shader is Return of the Obradin. The way this shader works is that it limits the displayed colors to a simple gradient and then uses that gradient in addition to noise to create an illusion of depth. You can create the Ditter shader with a ton of different gradients to give your game the look you like best. I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this shader because I like its overall look. I think it's very unique, but it also hurts my eyes a little bit and I do think it gets boring quite fast. I'm sure it can fit certain games, but I haven't found a use case for any of my games yet. Still, it's a great shader to stand out from the masses. I did make one cool discovery with this shader and that's if you combine it with the previously mentioned Kuhawara. Kuhawara. Kuh, Kuhawara. Uwahara shader, you get a softer version of it, which I think is easier on the eyes. Now we have a shader that is called the Hatching Shader. It gives your scene an outline, but also gives your shadows these pencil stripes. If you combine this with a gray shade filter, you can make your game look like a pencil sketch. This doesn't work well with any other shaders, but it looks pretty cool on its own. Oh, and as a bonus, I have this last shader, which is a variation of the previous shader. But this time, it turns your entire scene truly white while giving your assets the previous sketch-like look. And I have to say, I really love this one. But sadly, I'm only mentioning it as a bonus since I haven't found a way to fix the flickering. And every time you move, the hatching disappears and has to load back onto the scene. And this makes this visual style not really suited for games. But I'm sure some of you smart devs will find a solution to this. Just when you do, let's let me know. And if you want to see more ways of improving your game's look, then watch this video next. Here. Easy, you just put your mouse on it and then you click.